Brilliance Audio presents Citadel by Marco Clus, performed by Corey Jackson. I remember you, the voice said from the back of the room. Aiden turned around to look at the only other customer in the shop, an older woman who had been glancing at him ever since he had walked into the place a minute ago to buy breakfast. It was an automated shop, prepared food placed in transparent compartments along three of the four walls for customers to browse, so there was no clerk to overhear them. But Aiden still felt an unwelcome rush of anxiety. Excuse me? I remember you, she repeated. I remember your face. From Liberation Day. I'm not sure I know what you mean, Aiden said careful to keep his discomfort out of his voice. I scanned ID tags at the spaceport for the prisoner transport, she said. I don't remember your name, but I'm pretty good with faces. You were with the black guards. I assigned you to one of the shuttles. Aiden forced a surprised smile that he hoped looked nonchalant. I think your memory is playing tricks on you. I'm a local. I was... Home on Chryseis on Liberation Day, getting drunk with the rest of the city when the last fuzz had left. The woman's eyes narrowed. He had inflected his Oceanian with just enough of his mother's Chryseis timbre that it must have shaken her conviction at least a little. Which part of the city? she asked. Second canal belt right off Civic Square. Fancy part of town, the woman said. She seemed to appraise him anew with the fresh information in her mind. I lived on Chryseis for three years, out on the Eighth Belt. By the university quarter, he guessed, and she nodded. Well, she said, maybe my memory is playing tricks on me. Maybe I remember your face from there. Either that or you have a twin who was in the Fuzzhead military. My apologies, Nobody wants to be mistaken for one of those people. Aiden shrugged with a smile. No offense taken. It was a strange time. Seems like a bad dream after all these years. She nodded and mirrored his smile. But hers didn't quite reach her eyes. Aiden returned his attention to the wall of food compartments, but having been identified by a local had unsettled him and he just wanted to get out of the shop as quickly as possible without looking like he was running away. He picked two meals in what he hoped didn't seem like a random fashion and opened the compartments with his ID pass, making sure to be obvious about it so the woman behind him could see his Oceanian identification. He collected the trays, stacked them on top of each other, and walked out, giving the woman a friendly nod as he passed her. When he was outside in the sun, he glanced back and saw that she was following him with her gaze, the suspicion still evident on her face. He turned right and strolled down the leaf's main artery, doing his best to make his walk casual and unhurried. Out by the ocean wall of the nearby seaside park, he saw a warship for the first time since the end of the war. It was a hydrofoil cruiser, a sleek and ominous dagger shape that was carving a silver line through the shallow waters a few kilometers outside of the city, and it stood out between the smaller leisure craft and commercial fishing boats like an eagle in a chicken coop. Aiden watched it glide past the seaside park at the tip of the northeastern leaf. During the war, which had been brief for Oceana until Grecia had subdued and occupied the planet, the Oceanians had used these hydrofoil cruisers to good effect against the attackers as highly mobile seaborne anti-air platforms and artillery support. The mood in Adrastea had changed a little in the two weeks since the insurgent attack on Rhodia, but the hydrofoil cruiser off the coast was the first visual indicator that Oceana was preparing for conflict. The tourist crowds from all over the system were thinner than usual, and the chatter on the streets was more subdued. Aiden stepped around a cluster of Palladians who were showing off the panorama to some far-off friends or relatives via comtab projections, chattering and gesturing. Palladian was the one language in the system in which he could not even guess at the content of a conversation, 
but the laughs and the facial expressions supplied that information clearly enough. 